Welcome back to the Sound for More channel. Today I have the pleasure to introduce you to Frostbite 2 from AudioThing. Before I continue, I would like to remind my viewers to subscribe as it helps with growing the channel. Thank you very much. Additionally, if you would like to support what I do, please do follow the instruction contained in the video description. Thank you again. So we are inside the AUM. So as you appreciate, um, another AUV free um, app and plugin and effects from audio thing. So uh, you need to have a host. Okay, so we just start with creating an audio channel and we just add as an insert effect. Uh, we're going to search for Frostbite 2. There it is. So let's open it up, as you can see, uh, quite a nice, neat interface. I think the coloring is actually quite appropriate in terms of the name Frostbite. It's um, a spectral freeze type of effect, and we go into a little bit more details in a moment. Now, in terms of size, it's pretty uh, small. Uh, 15 megabyte thereabout so really easy to install doesn't take a lot of space and in terms here of uh, AU parameters which are exposed so lots of them which is really good news to further integrate it into your workflow in terms of uh, um, CPU usage you can see DSP up here 2% um, and also when it's running, I haven't seen it really to go above 15, 16%. And just for reference, I'm running it inside an iPad um, Pro M1 chip. Okay, so of course it will perform differently if you have an older iPad. Now, as a, an audio source, we are going to kick off with a piano sound, so from Pianotech. So let's connect it to a keyboard, the AUM keyboard there. And then we can, of course, open up the AUM keyboard and open up again Frostbite 2. Now, let's double click and double click again on the header here to adjust the size. It resizes um, pretty nicely as well. Okay, so as you can see on the screen, you have a number of modules. So it's um, Spectral Freeze, which has also Ring Modulation uh, module. And you, also, you have also these feedback here as well as a module, and then you freeze in the middle. You can see at the bottom here an LFO, which can act to different uh, target, which is a unique feature. So he has a lot of different targets, which really, really makes sense in terms of um, modulating with a low frequency oscillator. Okay. And then you have a master section. And notice here on the master section, you have a soft clip as well, and you dry and wet and the high pass filter. Now you can set this module to work in series on parallel, which makes a huge difference. You can, can also change the order. Click in here and hold, and you can drag like so, and then drop. You can see you can switch the position of uh, all of them like so. You can enable and disable them like that. You can see they change the color when they are disabled. That is definitely the case for the free modules at the top, but not for the LFO. It doesn't change the color here. I don't know if that is the cho a choice or if um, it's uh, probably something that would get fixed uh, moving forward. Selection of presets here, arrow up and down, standard interface, really factory and user uh, category, save button, delete and randomization. And then the typical user um, your controls that you can find from audio thing, right? Yeah, your lock in terms of parameters. Here you have your global setting, which is really good because here you can set the, if you want to lock or not the modules to move. You can also decide to clear the freeze buffer or all the buffers for that. And you can set the latency as well for the freeze. Um, Model, uh, sorry, a mode, and then also the fade. You can set in a millisecond for the freeze uh, module here, which um, is really useful. And of course, you have access to lock and lock the parameters, preset, copy and paste, zoom and scroll, which is great. Graphing controls as well. You can adjust the brightness and the contrast as well. And 
access the, the online menu and the about. So um, before we go any deeper, let's listen to what uh, it can do. So I purposely chosen a a piano sound because uh, to me, actually, it's always useful to test it with uh, an instrument that I know very well. So let's start with these cave um, preset and let's listen. Really great. Now, if the volume is too low, of course, you can adjust the dry and wet here. Remember, you have a soft clip as well. So let's increase the wet there. It's really, really great. You can see a combination of uh, feedback here, uh, your freeze here as well. And then for mo for modules like the LFO and the ring modulation, you can choose also your waveform. So your waveform from sine, triangle, ramp up and down, square, random. And the same here for the waveform for the LFO, right? So a lot of options. You'll find that the, the random waveform actually is really, really useful in terms of actually creating different effects. Now, then, let me show you this one chopping block, right? So... And as you would expect, it's just chopping uh, the sound. You can see the LFO is running here and there's a destination of, of the freeze output. Okay, the freeze output uh, is here. Uh, okay, and that's um, your output down here. You can see the modules have standard control for the balance left and right channel a mix like your driver and, and wet effect for that specific module and then the gain for the, for your output that is replicated for all the three modules right in this case the lfo here as a selection of a wave ramp down you can set the rate here sink into the host and then you can see the destination is going to the phrase output so it's going to cut um the output of the phrase and that is why it gives you that um, effect of chopping the sound, right? As you move to another preset, it resets the control and the it cuts the sound, which is useful in a way. So this church effect, you can click here on the clear to clear um, your freeze element, which is really useful as well. You can enable or disable it for here, but you can clear what you have really on uh, on the tail really of that freeze effect. So let's go, let's continue really. So you have so many presets I would say here as well. And some of them are really interesting because you can create even things like creatures effect. Interesting, you can see here, he achieves uh, this effect uh, uh, using the LFO against the ring modulation filter cut, cut off. You can see the filter here is moving uh, rapidly, right? So let's reintroduce it. Change the rate. So, and that is why it's important to actually have um, audio pa um, AU parameter, really, audio unit parameter exposed so that you can do things like the what I was doing at the moment, change the rate manually instead of doing manually, you can do it through another piece of software, right? So, this, uh, um, so uh, I, I think that's important. So, um, let's continue. Typical dual effect. 
and you can hear here you have your feedback here right you have your delay which you can set in terms of timing you can sync it to the host you can have ping pong effect and then the amount the amount is like the typical feedback you would have in normal delay but after all is amount for the feedback right So you can achieve standard, um, you know, um, effects like a normal um, a delay, right? So that is important. So indeed, echoing, for example. I like this freezing bubble is quite nice. It achieves that effect, as you can see, acting on the ring modulation module here. And he has an LFO, which is random here in terms of form, of waveform. And then he acts on the filter here and the cutoff. So he's changing the cutoff here. You can see why he's vibrating like this left and right. And he's giving you that uh, bubble effect. here is to keep the amount to a minimum so it doesn't change too much in terms of frequencies right on the right point to create that bubbling effect right you can have also things like um, uh, let's scroll further down so uh, so ghost effect which are really interesting One of my favorite one, hard disk failure. Now, if you're wondering how it is achieving that, um, you can see it's acting on the feedback delay. So he's changing this from an LFO perspective. Again, he has chosen the right random for, uh, waveform, and therefore he's going up and down, changing the uh, delay in terms of time, and it creates that effect of moving the sound randomly and giving you that uh, effect of, uh, uh, you know, unpredictability in terms of when the sound chips in, which is typical of trying to emulate a hard disk failure, right? You have a little bit of fade, but it's on the minimal here, you know, okay. So, um, so th that's great. I think uh, uh, I love that. So th these presets are really nice. I scored the nice uh, cycles. Makes you really give you the chill in terms of sound. It's really good. I think the name is appropriate and also the coloring, um, the, everything is appropriate. So lots of different uh, preset, as you can see, lots of work has gone into creating the preset, which I really welcome. Now let's change the uh, audio source. So let's go for uh, something like Digistack. So we bring in some drums, right? So we don't need any more the keyboard here. We just sync it to the host, uh, maximize it, scroll down and create a simple basic uh, drum loop. Nothing really fancy. And let's disable it first and let's click play. So nice and simple, right? So let's reactivate it and then let's kick off. Now, in terms of using a different type of audio source like a drums, you really need to pay attention to the type of modules that you have in place because some could create just a lot of noise.
So you can hear in this case the free bubbles actually is quite nice, but there are other cases where there's too much actually in terms of audio source for what you're going to create. So you really need to pay attention to it. So you can achieve a really interesting effect. If you were to use it, for example, against uh, uh, a, a track which you already created, right? Well, again, depending on the, the presets and how you configure the different model, you can achieve something nice. Other times it can be a little bit too much. <laughs> So hopefully that is giving you a bit of a view of uh, what you can do. Now let's go through a little bit more of the control. Let's go to the init preset, right? And um, uh, why not? Let's uh, um, go and use uh, FAC uh, drum kit. Okay, let's connect it to the AUM keyboard and let's bring that up again, resize the window, scroll down because you have additional preset which start from the, the note C2. So I'm going to hit that C2 and others note to give you a sense of what you can do. I'm going to disable the LFO. I'm going to disable the feedback and freeze module. I already talked about these controls, the balance, the mix, and the output. All right. Also, each, uh, both the ring modulation and the feedback have control for the filter, cutoff, and resonance for each one of them. So starting from the ring modulation, you can choose the waveform. As I mentioned earlier, you can set the frequency, the sync, and also you can ac activate stereo. So hopefully you can hear the difference. It's picking at the moment here, so you can enable, of course, a soft clip. You can, of course, adjust the amount of wet, and if you want the dry sound in out or not, or just the wet. So let's adjust the frequency here. You can remove the sync and go in milliseconds. Of course, you can choose different type of waveform, triangle, um, and random as well, which is interesting. Ramp up, ramp down. Then you can decide which filter, low pass, high pass, bend pass, and notch. Adjust the cutoff and the frequency. Remember, you can use an LFO against each module, so activate it here, choose the waveform, the rate, sync it or not to the host, and then choose the destination, in this case, ring modulation frequency, right? which is this one here. Decrease the amount. Choose the rate here. So he's modulating the frequency a much quicker, right? So, um, as I mentioned earlier, adjust the balance. Left and right. Double click to reset it, the mix. And the output.
without effect, with effect. Now let's disable this and let's go to the phrase. This is where the magic happens. You have different modes. You can choose spectral, reverb, convolution, and granular, which I really love. So reverb, convolution, granular. Then you can decide the length for the fade. The stereo width. You can also disable the freeze and still you have the width working, the EQ working here in the other controls. Okay. You can clear here the Q, right? Or the tail, I should say, not the Q. Here you can adjust the EQ, you have free bends, so. And you can start to hear that effect, which is really nice, cold effect, so flush type of sound with spectral works extremely well. As I mentioned, balance left and right, the mix and the output for this module. And then you have your feedback, your delay, where you can set the timing. Can I set it to sync to the host? Ping pong. Your amount in terms of feedback. Short. And then you can adjust the filter, cut off, resonance, a balance, mix, and output. Okay, so um, we have seen how this yellow fold works. And then you have your master, so you can run them in series, in parallel, the modules, and then you have an I pass filter here as well, and dry and wet control. Let's go to parallel. So you can hear that these two are independent, they are not one after the other. But if they were after one after the other, you, and if you were to change the order, ring ring modulationing. So you can achieve different effect based on the order and if they're running parallel or in serial. Of course, generally, if they're running parallel, uh, you hear all the three modules run independently, so you will hear more the feedback, uh, for example. But then again, it also depends on the drive. Uh, the dry and wet combination. Remember, you have also a soft clip, which helps, of course, in terms of picking and reducing the possibility of picking. Uh, the manual in, inside is really good as well, so I recommend that you have a look at that because uh, it's really great. I think, personally, uh, I love the granular and spectral part. Um, for me, they are the best in terms of the combination. I like a lot the uh, destination that you can use here, uh, which is great in terms of uh, uh, what you can modulate. I love the fact that there are many, many different type of preset which um, already there available for you, which uh, is fantastic news. And I like all, I like all the different controls. The menu is um, is really good. So yes, you could actually try other tools to combine and create something similar. But I think you will struggle a little bit. Probably something like Amarack and Drumbo can get closer um, to perhaps producing some of the effect. But you have to work to create them. 
um, if you had the normal reverb or convolution reverb, but normally to achieve all what you have here, again, you have to do a little bit of work and the combination order is not always straightforward and not all of them and an LFO. So I think uh, overall, actually, it's quite a nice little effect which works um, really nicely. So I, I definitely recommend it. Okay, I hope you enjoyed the tutorial and as always, see you next time. Bye.